the United States uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is leaving China after a visit to try to strengthen economic ties, saying that she believes the two countries can have a healthy relationship. While in China, Ms Yellen held 10 hours of talks with senior Chinese officials, saying that the meetings had put relations between the two countries on a surer footing. After a long period of tensions over trade and other issues, here's Ms. Yellen speaking at a press conference earlier. The U.S. and China have significant disagreements. Those disagreements need to be communicated clearly and directly. But President Biden and I do not see the relationship between the U.S. and China through the frame of great power conflict. We believe that the world is big enough for both of our countries to thrive. Both nations have an obligation to responsibly manage this relationship, to find a way to live together and share in global prosperity. Well, our correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes has been following the story from Bangkok and he gave us this analysis, this analysis of Ms. Yellen's visit to China. Very broadly speaking, I think this trip has gone as well as anyone could have expected. Firstly, Janet Yellen said she had managed to re-establish direct, face-to-face, -face, uh, respectful communications between China and the United States. And that's something that's been missing for really a very long time. Secondly, she was able to meet face-to-face -face with China's new new team, uh, particularly in the economy. And that means she, really referring to yesterday, on Saturday, she spent most of the day with Hurley Feng, the vice premier, and the man in charge of China's economy, very close to President Xi Jinping, a very key figure in the new Chinese administration. And, you know, no one from uh, the US administration has done that before. So that's important. The other thing Janet Yellen was at, went to great lengths to do during this trip is to try and convince the Chinese leadership that the Biden administration, unlike the previous Trump administration, is not openly hostile to China. She said they do not view the relationship through the prism of big power conflict and that America was not going to decouple its economy from China. Whether Chinese officials believe that or not, we do not know, and we haven't had a readout from them yet. Uh, I think, you know, so in conclusion, I mean, I think th this shows that dialogue is, is happening again. Uh, more dialogue will come in the next few months. There will be more visits by U.S. officials and Chinese officials the other way. But, I, you know, most experts you talk to say this is now a very difficult relationship and one that is going to need careful management in the long term if it is going to remain stable. And that this progress made in the last few days is good, but it is fragile. Well, let's speak now to Patrick Reed, a financial expert and a visiting lecturer at the University of Cambridge. Um, her Treasury spokesperson said that there'd been no um, specific policy breakthroughs, but this had, however, been successful. What's your assessment? Well, if you're expecting any brand new sparkling trade agreements, then you'd be sorely disappointed. What, and I agree with your colleague on this, there is a baby steps in thawing this um, the, this relationship. It, it really is uh, the very beginning of the thought, but we're, we're, we're far from out of the woods just yet. The difficulty, which, which may be ongoing, is separating the politics with the economics. Now, the two of the biggest economies in the world need to look through this because they both need each other. Yeah, can you just talk us through what each side is looking for in terms of, you know, what, what are the, the worries for either side? Yeah, I mean, you've got um, the steam taken out of the Chinese economy. You've got the renminbi, their, their, their currency, on its knees. Um, basically, when they relaxed the restrictions of COVID, there was huge optimism in China. Uh, that's been taken out. So you've got this sense of, um, you know, any help they can get is, 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 a, is a bonus. On the opposite side of that, you've got on the US side, you've got a resurgence of the dollar which doesn't help China, but you've also got pretty largely pristine US macro. We've got a really good GDP, durable goods, consumer confidence, and, and not a bad US jobs report um, above average uh, pre-pandemic levels. So, so that in its sense, you've got to ask yourself a question, who really needs this? Um, they both do to some extent. 
I suppose also you've got on the US side, they've been, she, Janet Yellen herself was critical of the, the curbs on, um, the Chinese curbs on US firms, wasn't she? And also they, they raised national security concerns about tech, don't they? Talk us through some of that. Yeah, well, China is uh, one of the biggest producers of, of certain metals, which do support and, and are, are very in, uh, in need for computer chips, you know, gallium and, and germanium. This is a key uh, driving force for the future of, of um, AI. And, you know, we, we've had this resurgence in NVIDIA stock. And, and, you know, looking at the years ahead, I'm sure the US is is very happy with the with their own macro right now but how long will that last you know it just does make sense for the, to to separate any national security action and, uh, and and recent comments by biden to to the economic picture and that is a, a, a tall order it will not be uh, solved anytime uh, soon but the important thing is the statement is there the other thing i, I need to mention is Olive branches get taken uh, and given uh, cyclically. So this is all normal posturing um, for, for the US and, and, and the China um, uh, economies.